I have been an artist entrepreneur since I was a young teenager. I have spent my life making my own jobs and you can too. My name is Kathleen Laziza and I am the executive director of Micro Museum. This series is called Make It Your Own. It is designed to encourage people to use their talents for their own personal economic development. Because in 21st century America, there are no jobs. Nobody owes you a job. You have to make your own job. And this is what artists do every single day. This series is not advocating that you personally become an artist, but rather that you learn to think like an artist. Listen to these artists talk about their experiences. Episode three, just start where you are. into your life. And it doesn't necessarily have to be music if it was if it was something else that started you on that. No, I think I mean it really was music. I actually don't come from a musical family, um, which my parents always like comment on. They're like, where did this even come from? Because mm-hmm. like no one my father nor my mother. Yeah, really. same for me. There's nobody yeah. in my family. I mean but but I I, I disagree with them in this sense because one of the things that the way art entered uh, into my life is that my parents were up, would take me um, like every week I'd be like buy one record. Mm, you know, okay. 45, you mm-hmm. know? and I would buy like I, mean, I would buy like all types. I remember the first one I bought I think was like uh, John and Yoko uh, Double Fantasy. Uh, okay. Um, I think just like the it was the single. The single yeah. of it. I remember being uh, very small mm-hmm. and uh, being upstairs in uh, the attic, mm-hmm. almost the attic. And listening to um, a record player and uh, hearing, uh, I think it was Maria Callas. Mm-hmm. And she was singing different arias, and I remember feeling completely transported. Mm. How old you were you? Oh, I was pretty young. Uh huh. Very young. That's on three or four. Uh huh. It's very oh, young. Uh-huh. Upstairs, this uh-huh. morning. Uh-huh. And hearing this just incredible voice, incredible music, just, uh-huh. uh, yeah, just uh, lifting uh-huh. me to somewhere else. And, uh-huh. and feeling like, oh, this is bigger. Uh, well, my grandfather was a Baptist preacher, and um, my grandmother was very much my protector. And um, and like I feel like where I learned poetry from was from the preachers, mm-hmm. right? You know, um, it was from like black women. So like you know, uh, being in academia and all of that, like a lot of times they're like, you know, Shakespeare is the essence of poetry, and I'm like, well, no, it's like the black preachers, you know. And I mean, what they did with language and what they did with story. There was actually a great story about being at a, a relative's house for a holiday, when I, maybe when I just started speaking. And there was a point during dinner where I turned to my dad and I said, I want to go in the basement and play the drums. And he goes, we're, we're not home. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no drums in the basement. I believed at that age that everyone had drums in the basement. <laughs> you know, like, that, in, in that infant mind, That's great, yeah. like, what's, what, why doesn't have everyone have drums in their yeah, basement? Yeah, we have drums in our basement. And, uh, <laughs> and I, since then, it hasn't left me. Mm. I still think, you know, as a, as a metaphor for life, mm. why doesn't everyone have drums in their basement? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> President, that should be a platform. <laughs> right, right, right. Everyone should have drums in their basement. That's it. A chicken in every pot and a yeah. drum set in every basement, right? Uh, and a taco show. Uh, <laughs> so. so, sure, this is a, um, a, a work of art um, by uh, one Ella Emerson. Full disclosure, she's my daughter. Um, <laughs> I acquired this uh, at her grandma's house. It's uh, from her, her monster period. 
<laughs> it's an entitled, entitled Birthday Monster. And um, Ella has a, in her work, she has a, a sort of dialectical relationship with monsters. Um, they terrify her, but at the same time, she's very intrigued. And then when I was 10, in the, in the fifth grade, my, my teacher wanted to put out a play for Christmas. Mm -hmm. They had this like, you know, but there's a Christmas pageant thing, whatever, and there were to play, and they told me to read the play with the rest of the class, and I out loud said, this is awful. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I said it. It just kind of came out. He's like, you think you can do better? And I'm like, yeah, I can do better. <laughs> so I went home and wrote a Christmas play. <laughs> It's a simple system for maps. It's about sustainability. It's part of what we're going open with, so it can be used with anything in the future. There'll be a Creative Commons license. But um, for me, it, it represents um, a, a mind, part of the mind of the world because it's co-created by maybe 60 people, the symbol set. And when we made it, we shared it as a font. So it could be used with any computer program, which was really important still, but when we did it, when we started it 20 years ago especially, so. What's our city count now? How many green maps? Oh, there's only about 950. Yeah, 950. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to keep 65 track. countries. Whatever is uh, uh, vulnerable mm -hmm. enough and open and raw mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. I also, I also taught myself not to be afraid to contemplate things that mm -hmm. are not usually contemplated by others. In my apartment there's a box of notebooks and a few shelves of notebooks and the plan is to take a few notebooks every time I'm going out with a highlighter and go through and, and because they, they become full of some, some interesting things, but a lot of junk, a lot of the little thoughts are a lot. So to, to edit them down and to create things with them, but to reduce them, I guess, um, like mine them in. I think it's really pertinent in, in an age where inspiration and sincerity and um, individuality has been snuffed out so much by this like corporate mechanism. That's the only, that's the best way I could put it. Mm -hmm. Like I saw it probably somewhere around 2000, everything just take this huge dip in music, art, film, really every creative industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel like it's, for lack of a better term, capitalism, which kind of squeezed the life out of it because everything became formulaic. And it's more difficult to be recognized and appreciated for doing your own thing and remaining true to yourself. You know, it's easier to fit into a box. Here are three steps to remember. Step one. If you take enough baby steps towards your goal, you will eventually make your goal. Step two, brainstorm about how to go from A to B to C to D to meet your goals. Write them down, revisit them frequently, and put them into play. Step three, feel free to model yourself after other people that you view as successful. To learn more about this series, make it your own, visit micromuseum.com.